Welcome back. Welcome back to in-person Sunday evening. I say welcome back, I've never been before. It's my first time at a Sandiford Sunday evening service in person. Um, thank you all for coming. And thank you for those of you still on Zoom, hopefully, um, tuning in. Um, and it's great to be able to still do both. Um, and thank you also for your patience. Uh, whilst we've been moving towards this point, in theory, we could have been uh, back in person um, a while ago, but we held off uh, just while well, we sorted out some of the practicalities. So thank you if you've been desperate to be back in the building in the evenings. Um, and, and note that uh, in-person prayer meetings are not starting back this week. They will be uh, the following week, the 4th of May, Star Wars Day, as it's known. May the 4th be with you. There you go. I'll get a joke in there to start with. Um, so yeah, not this week for in-person prayer meetings. So if you turn up um, for a prayer meeting on Wednesday, uh, nobody will be here. So the following week, and then we will try and work out how to do a hybrid prayer meeting um, and have that online as well. So if you can't make it, then it will still be online. Uh, Psalm 113, uh, verse 3 says, From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. I don't know if any of you remember singing the chorus from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name be praised. Um, I remember singing that at kind of SU events and things like that. Um, but God is the same whether or not the sun is coming up or whether or not it's going down. At the moment it's kind of beginning to go down. But the Lord's name is still to be praised. And so we come to worship him this evening and we're going to start that tonight by standing and singing Come and stand before your maker.
Let's pray. Lord, we come and stand before you tonight. We come to rejoice. We come to lift our hands, to raise our voices, to give you all of our attention, to give you all of our worship. We come because you are worthy. We come because there is no one else through whom we can be saved. We come because we are not worthy and we have failed and fallen and stumbled and yet you open your arms wide. Your mercy is beyond what we can ever imagine. Your love is greater than we ever thought. And even though we come unworthy, when we come seeking your forgiveness, you lavish it upon us. You pour it out upon us. You run to greet us. You welcome us with open arms. You clothe us anew. And you rejoice at every sinner who repents. So Lord, as we come this evening, as we come into your presence, as we come to worship, speak to us, Lord. Open our hearts again, open our eyes and our minds that in this place, on this night, we would know your presence. That in this place and on this night, whether we have known you for years or for days or have never met you, that we would know you tonight. That we would recognize that in this place, is the God who made the heavens. He reaches down to touch our hearts, to forgive us. And he stepped down to die for us that we might live with him for eternity. This is the God we worship. And so we come. Amen. We continue our worship. We sing of that God. Behold our God who has held the ocean in his hands. Nothing can compare, come now. 
Again, those of you who weren't here this morning won't know, but uh, Noel is still away, but he has uh, blessed us again with some video of the announcements for tonight, so we'll just, uh, we'll have those now. Sorry, I couldn't remember where the end was going to be on that. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say a huge amount more about presbytery planning. Um, if you're excited about that, then you can go back and watch the video from this morning when it hits YouTube. Um, and... Uh, you can ask me about presbytery planning if you if you want to, um, and uh, yeah, and also obviously you can come and speak to me if you're interested in joining the church. Um, the one thing that I don't think Noel said, but I will underline, is you you're more than welcome to come to the meetings on the eighth and the fifteenth, and you're not committed at that point to doing anything. If you're just curious, then you can come, and um, and even if you come to both of those, and then you can then say actually it's not for me just yet, um, that's fine. Um, let's uh, yeah, let's sing it again, and we're going to sing "Faithful One," so unchanging.
So tonight we're going to be starting a series on the book of Jonah. And one of the striking things about the book of Jonah, right from the very beginning, is that Jonah is sent to his biggest enemy, one of the most feared and actually evil empires. And so when we come to pray tonight, actually, what I want us to do tonight is to do the thing that we actually don't do all that often in church, but which we are commanded to do, and that is to pray for our enemies. To pray for those that actually maybe we don't think are deserving of our prayer. And actually they may not be. But because we worship a God whose mercy is far wider than we could ever imagine, um, we're going to pray tonight uh, for people and places and situations uh, that we wouldn't normally perhaps touch this side of. So um, let's take time now to pray for our enemies. Lord Jesus, of all the things that you have commanded, in many ways, this is the hardest. Sometimes, Lord, it, it is even easier to love people as long as we don't have to wish them well. When actually what we want for them is your judgment and not your mercy. So, Lord, tonight we come recognizing our, our own failings in this, and, and we pray for those that perhaps do not often hit the top of our prayer list. We pray for Vladimir Putin and those around him. Lord, and as we see the situation in Ukraine, it is easy to paint him with a dark brush. But Lord, you love him and your desire for him is to know you. For him to know your mercy and your grace. So we pray for him tonight. A man who has connections to the church, who knows your scriptures, a man who talks of prayer. Lord, we pray your blessing upon him, that you would show him mercy and grace and compassion, that you would reveal yourself to him in new ways. We pray for those around him, that they would be wise leaders who would speak with integrity and truth, who would bring peace I know we pray too for the various governments and organizations that, that make up the Islamic State, so often opposed to the ideals that we hold dear, so often linked with acts of terror and oppression. And yet they too need to hear the gospel. And how will they hear if no one will preach? If no one will speak up? So Lord, we pray for them. Lord, I think of all the stories that come out of Islamic nations, of people who have had dreams of you, who have heard you speak, who have found suddenly a curiosity and a desire to read the Bible, Oh, I pray that for them, for the leaders in places like Afghanistan, organizations like the Taliban, for other countries, Iran, Iraq, and, and the other Arab nations, for places like Dubai and, and Qatar, and the other Arab Emirates. But I want to pray that you would speak into their lives that they would dream of you, that they would seek the scriptures for you, that they would find truth in your teaching. 
I pray, Lord, that you would show them love and mercy and compassion. Lord, that you would speak to them. Lord, I think of those in our own nation who we might think of as our political opponents. People that perhaps we think stand for things that that we don't agree with or whose actions we disapprove of, whichever party they may belong to. Lord, give us strength to pray for them. To pray for all of those who step into public service, regardless of which party they belong to. For all those who seek to lead, particularly in these times of crisis. We ask, Lord, that you would show them your love and mercy too. And Lord, as we pray for them, Lord, give us a heart even for those that we disagree with. Give us ears that are willing to hear what they have to say without dismissing it out of hand. Help us to speak well of those we disagree with, to not belittle them, to not use straw man arguments, but to speak with truth about those we disagree with, to speak with honesty and integrity about those, even those people, even whom we may think are not honest and who lack integrity. And Lord, we pray within the church for those theologically we would disagree with, those who we think of as borderline heretics, those who we think are dragging the church down or leading people astray, those we think have missed the point. Lord, we pray your blessing upon them. We pray that they too would know you more each day. That they too would live life in all its fullness. They would live the lives of ones who are loved by their Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for those that we are in dispute with, whether international national, theological, even our neighbours and our friends or our family who sometimes we struggle with. Give us the courage to pray for them and hear these prayers now. In Jesus' name, who came and died even for his enemies. Amen the sing of God's great mercy and compassion. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. We're going to stay seated for this one. and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far 
He has removed the transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far He has removed the transgressions from us. Praise the and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. how far he has removed the transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west that's how far he has removed the transgressions from us So, um, between now and Pentecost, um, which is the beginning of June, we're going to uh, take it. We're taking a bit of a break from dear Theo that we've been using for uh, uh, this year so far, um, and we're going to start on Pentecost with a series on Acts. We're going to go back to dear Theo. Um, if you don't have a copy of the dear Theo book, um, let me know, and I'll get some more copies. I think that there are still some bookmarks. But we're going to go back, and we're going to go through the book of Acts starting at the beginning of June. But for these six weeks, we're going to be camped out in the book of Jonah. And Jonah's a, a fascinating little book that has caught the imagination of, of many people. Um, there's lots of stories and books about Jonah um, and about the, the contents of this book. It also tends to be in pretty much every children's Bible you can find mostly because we like to see pictures of whales vomiting people up onto the beach. Um, and who doesn't like that? Um, but it's quite unlike any other book, any other, certainly of the prophets, uh, that, we'll, that we find in the Old Testament. Um, it's also like all of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, virtually impossible to find unless you use the contents in your Bible. Um, can take a long time flicking backwards and forwards. It's just after Obadiah, which is one page in my Bible, impossible to find. It's just before Micah, which is only a little bit longer. So, you know, take my advice, use the contents, and then you'll find it much more quickly. And then see if you can get a Bible with a bookmark. Um, makes life a lot easier, particularly if you're standing up here. Um, so we are going to be reading from Jonah over the next six weeks, but before I do, I'm going to start by using one of the Bible Project videos. Um, we've used these a few times. Um, if you're sitting at the back, good luck. Um, 
It's a bit small. You might have to go back and watch it, but it's easily found on YouTube. If you just do a search on YouTube for Bible Project Jonah, it will come up and you'll get this overview. Um, but hopefully even with, with the audio, you'll understand a little bit. And this will give, you, give us an overview. It's quite long. Um, it's about nine minutes. But this will help us understand a bit more about what's going on in this book. So if we could play that now. That's a bit of a, an overview. Hopefully that will help us. And we may refer back to it a couple of times over the next few weeks as we think about this fascinating book. Um, one of the interesting parts is, the, is obviously these, these parallel stories, or not parallel, they, one after the other, of, uh, of Jonah going and meeting a whole bunch of pagans, sailors or Ninevites, and then, um, uh, and then they repent, and he's a bit angry about the whole thing. Um, and and uh, Tim Keller, uh, he likens this to the story of the prodigal son, which is one that we will mostly know well, where you have two sons, one of whom runs away and eventually comes back, and the other who stays at home, um, but sits in religious high dudgeon as he watches the repentance of his brother. Um, and he says, you know, actually, um, I've got his book here. Uh, his book on Jonah is called The Prodigal Prophet, um, because Jonah is a bit like both sons, um, that firstly he runs away, um, but then later on he sits and watches these repentant Ninevites and is really angry that they are being shown mercy. Um, so that's uh, also an interesting parallel. So there's lots to play with, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, um, you will realize that this is trying to mess with your head, and we will do our best to mess with your head over the next six weeks. Um, but let's start uh, in the best place to start, the very beginning. We're going to read the first three verses of Jonah. Jonah 1, verses 1 to 3. Uh, hopefully you've managed to find it if you've got your Bibles with you, but it's there on the screen. It even all fits on one page. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Amen. So, here is Jonah. Um, one of the things that I'm going to use uh, a, a little bit over the course of the next six weeks is a different book. This is um, uh, a, a guy from Bristol called Simon Polario a few years ago began producing um, these books. I think we've got a, a slide of the, of the... There we go. These are the word-for-word -word Bible comics, um, and I've become a big fan. Um, they are graphic novels based on scriptural text, but they contain every single word from the text. So you could actually follow along um, fully with the NIV. The, the, the newer ones are in the NIV translation. Um, and he spends a lot of time doing biblical research and historical research to make sure that the pictures are um, accurate, but also it's very engaging. If you're not particularly a, a reader, um, then I can recommend these. He's done a few. Um, he managed to do the whole of the Gospel of Matthew, and he's done Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and... Sorry, no, Judges, Ruth, and Esther. Um, and he happened to have done Jonah. Um, and I'm going to use some of the pictures today. I've not managed to get them quite big enough, so the word's not particularly... Um, uh, as readable. Um, but if we could get the, the first slide from there, and what we'll see is a map. This gives us an idea of the scale. Um, that scale bar in the top left-hand corner, the width of that from black to black um, is 100 miles. So you can see that Nineveh is actually quite a long way away, um, and you've got just at the, the middle there, Gath Hefa, which is where he was, and he goes, instead of heading inland to Nineveh, he heads down to Joppa and then into the sea, off to Tarshish, which is the furthest known uh, kind of westerly port um, that he could find. He was basically going as far away as he could. Um, can we get the next slide? Sorry, that's uh, going to skip on. Um, and so the word of uh, the Lord came to Jonah, son uh, of uh, Amittai, and he says, go to the great city 
of Nineveh and preach against it. Later on says that Nineveh was three days walk across, uh, which gives you an idea of the scale of this place. It was an enormous city. And uh, Next slide. For, uh, sorry, because its wickedness has come up before me. And the Assyrian Empire was an evil empire. It was one of the most bloodthirsty, gory empires ever. It was essentially a terrorist state that did horrific things to people. This was not a good place. And so, uh, his wickedness come up before me, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish as quickly as possible. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying his fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Jonah is not a character that really we should be liking. He has an evil face, as you can tell. This is, this is a guy who is plotting and planning because actually he's trying to get away from this. And um, if you picked up in the first video the connection with one uh, in, in Kings uh, of the, this kind of bad uh, prophecy that he'd given, this is not a character we are supposed to uh, relate to in many ways. Um, and certainly his actions are not what we would expect of a man of God. And yet he also has a unique missionary calling. Compared to so many of the other prophets that we read about, while there's always been a place in the people of God for Gentiles to come and to come to know God, usually what would happen is it was those who live in our midst, Gentiles who, who come to live in the land of Israel and who choose to come and worship the Lord and, and, and agree to follow the law and are circumcised can, can become part of God's people. And that had been the way from the very earliest people from Egypt who chose to go with the Israelites when they left Egypt and into the wilderness. And then on into, as the, as the nation of Israel was established, there is always this hint in the background that whilst perhaps the Israelites hadn't picked up on it all that much, that God was a God of all people and that all people were welcome. But here, what's unique is that, Josh, uh, is that Jonah is sent, sent into the very midst of the darkest enemy. This is not about the people of Israel, this is about the people of Assyria in a way that has never really, never really happened before. And so he sent into this evil empire, an empire that, that delighted in depicting the torture that they gave to their enemies. You can go and look at some of the, uh, the historical and archaeological evidence of what they got up to. It's not pretty. It's not good. And yet Jonah is sent to them. So perhaps, maybe a little bit understandably, he runs the other way. Now there's a bit of me that says, maybe he didn't understand God as much as he thought he did. Um, because running the other way was never going to work. But he does. He tries to escape from God. And indeed, even actually when he eventually goes to Nineveh, which we'll get to in a few weeks' time, he's still really trying to escape God. As I was thinking about it, this morning I was thinking about some of the ways that, that we act as, as groups. And I was thinking that at times when there is industrial dispute, there are often two ways of going about it. And we see them I think there's actually, we're seeing one of them um, coming up in the next few weeks with people who work for Fast Bus, is that people go on strike and they walk out of work and they say, I'm not going to work. And that's one way of objecting to what's happening in your company, is that the unions will say they'll strike. But the other way of doing it is, is what's called working to rule, 
which is where you say, I'm going to come in and do the job, but I'm just going to do the bare minimum, just enough that I've done all the right things. And you know, my shift says, my shift pattern says I work nine to five, so I'm not going to start work at 8.59, I'm going to start at nine. And as soon as it hits five, well, that's me done. And I'm going to make sure that I do everything to the letter with no flexibility. And, and, and these are kind of two ways that we sometimes see at work in, in, uh, in organizations and businesses in our, in our world. And in some ways, Jonah is a bit like this. On the one hand, he kind of goes, you know, I'm out of here, I'm striking, I'm leaving. And then later on in the book, it's much more, well, I'm going to do what you say. As, as we saw in the video, he gives a five-word prophetic message, which doesn't mention God, doesn't mention repentance, just kind of goes, it's over, and then sits down. And you kind of go, you know, okay, he's given a prophetic message, but it's really, you know, that's going to work into rule. It's the bare minimum he could get away with, and it still be regarded as the message that God told him to preach and so he does the bare minimum again trying to escape God and ultimately the whole of this is because he is struggling to accept God's mercy for others he's all too willing to accept God's mercy for himself as he sits in a whale or under a, a, a vine. Thank you, God, for your mercy to me, he says. But why? Why are you merciful on them? And, and how true to life is this in so many ways? Why are you treating that person so well? Well, I treated you well as well. Why has that person got this thing? We see it in children at times. It's not fair. As I often tell my children, the only way for, make it, for me to make it fair is if neither of you get anything. Which I'm happy to do. It's a lot cheaper. Um, but actually, that doesn't, it's not what they want. They would like it to be fair, but actually in some ways what they really want is they would like it to be unfair in their direction. And even if it is fair, they will, they will look in, they're not like this now, they're older now. I'm going to get into trouble if I say too much. Um, but but we, we see it in siblings, not just my children, but probably actually me and my sister. We downplay what we've been given because we see what they've been given and we think they've been given more than us. And it actually doesn't matter whether or not it's fair what we really want is we want bias. And that's what Jonah was like. And actually he was willing to run to the other side of the world to not have to preach this message. Because actually he knew at least there was a chance that God might forgive because that's what God is like. And so the, the first question, the first mirror that Jonah holds up to us is it asks us, well, how, how are we running? How are we running from what God is calling us to do? How are we running from what God is wanting to do in others? How are we running from those that perhaps God is calling us to? How are we running, not perhaps by running away, but by going in the other direction and looking down on others? Being the older brother, looking at the repentance of the younger brother and, and totting, going... You know, why does he get a party when I've done all the right things? Why do they get that thing that I want? Haven't I done all of the right things? The answer is 
Maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe God is just overwhelmingly loving and merciful. And why can't we rejoice in that for ourselves and for our others? How are we running? And perhaps it's time to stop because it's exhausting. And because actually it doesn't matter how far you run. If you look over your shoulder, God's there keeping pace, not breaking a sweat, very annoying, but he is there. And maybe it's just time to stop and turn around and accept his embrace for us and for others. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, so often actually we see what you have given to us and we forget how amazing it is. And so when we see amazing things happening in other people's lives, we think, well, why, why them and not me? Don't I deserve more? But Lord, your love is unending and your mercy is so wide. Lord, help us to discover in you tonight your love for us, your mercy upon us. And help us to be willing to preach that into others' lives and to rejoice when, when they turn to you. Help us to rejoice in a merciful God who loves his enemies and has shown great mercy on us who were his enemies. Help us to know you more, to love you better and to see your mercies as a great joy on all whom they fall. In Jesus' name. Amen. Closing him tonight is over all the earth, Lord reign in me.
Go with the message of God's love and mercy. Love your enemies. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.